Hey, church family. Uh, man, what a beautiful day today. The sun's out, the sky's blue, it's about 80 degrees, and uh, just wanted to take this opportunity to share a few words with you. You know, um, man, Jeremy's message Sunday was great, and, and to be honest, it really challenged me. You know, he he mentioned in there that we need to establish a baseline, and that talk about about physical fitness, and, and it really made me evaluate where I am in my walk with the Lord and just my shortcomings and the things that I need to be more physically fit spiritually. And the, the, the one challenge that he gave all of us, and he was talking about, about reading the Bible, and, and he said something. He said, if you're not reading the Bible, here's where to start. Start with the red letters. Well, the Lord woke me up early Tuesday or Monday morning, probably around 2 o'clock Sunday night, and uh, uh, it, it was de definitely a God moment. You know, I woke up and it was two o'clock. That's what time I've been getting up and in this 14 days of prayer. It's just just something that that I chose to do. And when I sat down on the couch, I, to be honest, I was struggling, closing my eyes and praying. And um, I just started praying out loud and I started reading God's word. And I thought, man, I'm going to take Jeremy's challenge. So I want to share with you today something that is so incredible for me. I, I started in the book of Matthew and. And the first time red letters are mentioned or even in the New Testament in Matthew is chapter 3, and verse, four, uh, verse 15. And Jesus says this. He said, it should be done for we must carry out all that God requires. Well, that story is about the baptism of Jesus. Jesus has gone to, to John the Baptist and then he goes to John the Baptist and he says, John, baptize me. And of course, John is like us. He argues with him and he says, Lord... I don't need to be baptizing you. You need to be baptizing me. And, and that's when Christ says these words. It says, it should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. Man, Christ has given us an incredible picture about being obedient to God's word. Even though he was sinless, even though there was no reason for him to be baptized, he goes to John the Baptist and says, baptize me. I believe he did that out of an act of obedience to the Father, but I believe he did that also as an example to you and I to be obedient to God's Word. My question to you today, are, are you doing all that God requires through His Word? Are you being obedient to God? Christ was obedient. He obeyed. The next time we read uh, red letters is also in in chapter, I mean, it starts in chapter 4. It's the temptation of Christ. And, and let me just give you a background here. When, when Jesus left that point where he was baptized, the scriptures tell us that he went into the desert to pray and fast. For 40 days and 40 nights, Christ fasted and prayed to the Father. Um, man, we're going through tough times, and, and it looks like a, a lot of the cities in Texas, a lot of the states in the United States are on this uh, shelter in place, stay in place, and, and people are losing their minds over potentially having to stay at home for 12 to 14, maybe 21 days, something like that, and they're thinking, are we going to have enough toilet paper? Are we going to have enough food? And when I read this, man, what hope there is that, guys, we can last 40 days by just fasting, by, by just drinking water, by depending on God. So the background of that is Christ went into the wilderness. He prayed 40 days and 40 nights. And then the scriptures tell us he was tempted. Man, it's so incredible when you follow this, this deal with the red letters. Not only did he go in and fast and pray, but it says the tempter came. Satan came to tempt Christ. And the next red letters we see is in chapter 4, verse 4. And it says, but Jesus told him, meaning the tempter, he told him, Know the scriptures say, people do not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. You see, the very first temptation that Satan used on Jesus in the desert was he found him at his weakest point, what he thought was his weakest point, because he'd gone 40 days without food. And he said, if you're hungry, turn these stones into bread. And then Christ says these words, he says, no, people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. My question first, you'll be in obedient. Do you trust God enough to supply all your needs? Even the food on your table, do you trust him enough? 
If we keep going through there, it says the second time the devil took him up on a, up, up to the holy city of Jerusalem, to the highest point in the temple, and he said, if you are the son of God, jump off. And then Satan does something here. He, old slick, tries to use the very thing that Christ used to resist that first temptation. He tries to use scripture to tempt Christ. And he says, for the scripture say, he will order the angels to protect you and they will uphold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Jesus' response, the next red letters here, folks, the next red letter said, the scriptures say also, you must not tempt, test the Lord your God. You must not test the Lord your God. How many of us go through life and, and man, we, we trust God to some aspects, but then we test God by saying, oh, man, God says he'll supply all my needs, so I'm just going to be ignorant through these times and I'm not going to prepare. I'm not going to take care of my family. I'm not going to do the things that I know I need to do to take care of them. Yes, God will supply all of our needs. And the scripture says that man does not live by bread alone. But he also gives us common sense. As we've read over and over, he gives us self-discipline. And he tells us to use the brain that I gave you. Use common sense and take care of yourself. Don't test me. I hear stories all the time of people that, that say, Oh, I, I'm not going to the doctor because God's going to heal me. I believe that God can heal you. I believe that God is still a healing God. But God also gives us common sense. If you got a toothache, go see a dentist. If you're sick, go see a doctor. That's why God gave them the abilities and the talents and the wisdom that they have. Don't test God. Trust God. We keep reading in this passage. The devil also tries to tempt him, and he says, The next the devil took him to a peak, a very high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he says, I will give it all to you if you kneel down and worship me. I love what the scriptures say here. It says, get out of here, Satan. Get out of here, Satan. Some of those say, get away from me. Be gone. And in some translations, there's an exclamation point in there because Jesus has had enough. He says, I'm done with you. Get out of here, Satan. For the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Through these crazy times we're going on, man, people are putting their, their trust in a lot of different things. And I believe that God has put authorities above us, that God knows those in authority. And we have to trust them to some extent to know that they are doing what's in the best interest of our world today and sometimes uh, in the best interest of, of the, the communities we live in. But our trust isn't in them. Our trust is in God. Our trust here is, is says... We must worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Guys, my question to you is first, do you obey him? And second, do you trust him enough? Do you trust him enough to take care of you, to provide what you need? Do you know his word enough, especially the words in red, to say, God, I'll be obedient to you? Jesus, I trust you. I love if you keep reading through these passages, chapter 4, we, we see the temptation of Christ. And then after it says that Christ is tempted, it says, Then the devil went away and the angels came and took care of Jesus. My prayer is that you trust him enough, that you're obedient enough to know that his angels are going to take care of you. That God has a purpose and a plan and God is going to use even this craziness that's going on in our world to do great and powerful and mighty things. As Jeremy shared in the video the other day, the number of people that had viewed the sermon on Sunday morning. I've heard stories every day since Sunday. Started Sunday afternoon from different pastors, different churches that did live stream. And the numerical side of that, while we're not a numbers and noses church, it is incredible to hear the number of people that heard the gospel Sunday morning. And here's my prayer is that most of them heard this very simple message because if we keep reading through Matthew chapter 4 the very next red letters we hear are when Jesus began his ministry now if you're part of riding the river cowboy fellowship you've heard these words several times from Jeremy and I both over the last several months the last year uh, most of last year we talked about that pivot point in our lives that point where we remember where we accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior where we made a complete turnaround and decided to, to start being obedient to him, to trust him. And then we came to a point where we did what God's word says. Jesus' words in red, chapter 4 of Matthew, 
verse 17. It says, Jesus began to preach. I love the simplicity of this message. He began to preach. Repent of your sins. Turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Red letters from Jesus. Repent of your sins. Turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Do you trust him? Are you obedient to him? Do you trust him? Do you remember a time where you turned and repented of your sins? He ends chapter 4. He ends chapter 4 of Matthew. And we see that this is the story of the first disciples. That's how it's titled in my Bible. It says, One day Jesus was walking along the shore of Galilee, and he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter and Andrew, throwing a net into the water, for they fished for a living. And Jesus called out to them. He said, Come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. Next red letters. Come and follow me. Church family, are you into God's word? Are you obedient to it? Do you trust him? Have you turned from those things that have become idols in your life? Have you turned from those things that, that you know are keeping you from doing what God's called you to do? And then the second point, are you following him? You see, there's a lot of people that, that man, they read this book and they become obedient to God. They, they turn from those wicked ways. They trust God, but then they spend most of their time sitting in a chair or sitting in a church building on Sunday morning or Wednesday night. And now, they're maybe they're sitting in their pajamas watching it on Sunday morning live stream somewhere. But Jesus didn't tell us to be still. He said, come, follow me. My prayer is that you remember a time you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. My prayer is that you have trusted him and you trust him daily. My prayer is that maybe through this crazy time in life that you are turning to a point where you say, God, we need you. God, humble me. But then you don't get comfortable. You don't get still. You start following him. My prayer is that we would get so much into God's word these days. We'd use the technology that God's put right in front of us and that we would speak boldly, unapologetically, but biblically the words that God speaks through his word. Family, pray intensely. Pray with fasting. Love those that God's put around you and love others. Trust him and fan into flame the fire for Jesus Christ. God bless y'all. Let me pray. Father, we come to you. Lord, we praise you today. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings in our lives. And Lord, as we've said over and over at our family up there, these are the greatest days in the history of man to be alive because we have the opportunity to profess you, to worship you, to share you, in a means that the world has never known before. So, Father, we pray that you bind Satan's hand from technology. God, that you use this technology to impact your world. And, God, we pray sincerely and humbly, Lord, that you, you cure this virus. Lord, you remove this disease from our land. And, God, that you restore the fellowship that we so much enjoy at Riding the River. But, God, until then, we will praise you because we do trust you. God, you are our hope. God, we love you. Father, we pray today for those that are sick and hurting, Lord, that maybe have been affected by this virus, Lord. Maybe those that, that are economically challenged, Lord, that, that, man, these times are just tough on their pocketbooks. God, we pray today that your peace would surround them. Father, we love you. Father, we thank you for your amazing grace. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless y'all. See you down the road.